Every super-powered Weapon X's experiments, backstory is explored. The Weapon X program is one of the most pivotal events in the Marvel Universe, being mentioned several times to finally being showcased in 2009's X-Men Origins Wolverine. Created by writer Len Wein and artist John Romita Sr., Weapon X was a secret government genetic research project which weaponized willing or unwilling beings, mostly mutants. Keeping itself in the shadows, the nefarious organization conducted brutal experiments on mutants. The outcomes were not always favorable, as most subjects escaped or turned against them. But they did make some of the most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe. We all know how Wolverine's adamantium upgrade made him an unstoppable force. But there are many more like him. Today's video will explore every superpowered Weapon X's experiments. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is Weapon X Experiment? The code name Weapon X was first mentioned in the Incredible Hulk comics issue 180 in 1974. It was associated with Wolverine, who also made his first appearance in the issue. It was the code name for a secret US government project that sought to deliberately experiment and induce super abilities in their subjects to weaponize them for their military purposes. They even tampered with their subjects' memories and fabricated them according to their whims. The X serves more as a Roman numeral as Weapon X was the tenth installment of an older program known as the Weapon Plus program. The program was started started by the US government in 1945 after a civilian advisor, Professor Thornton, discovered the secret laboratory of Dr. Nathaniel Essex in a Nazi concentration camp. They began their experiments with the primary purpose of producing super soldiers for World War II, and their first successful project was Project Rebirth, which gave birth to Captain America. Later it was renamed as the Weapon Plus program. Going by the Roman numeral, Project Rebirth was rebranded to Weapon 1. Following this, there were several attempts to create another perfect super soldier, but without any success. Criminal masterminds Romulus, who had been penetrating his influences within the CIA, goaded them to sponsor the 10th incarnation of the program, named Weapon X. However, instead of creating super soldiers, Weapon X involved reconstructing the DNA of their subjects to enhance their powers or create new ones. The entire procedure was controlled and guided by Professor Thornton. Thornton then recruited former FBI scientist Abraham Cornelius and former NASA operative Carol Hines and ordered them to begin their experiment with their first test subject, Logan. Logan was then serving the Canadian government's Department K and Team X and was chosen owing to his quick healing capabilities. They also managed to tap into Logan's memories and learn more about his life events. After projecting his thoughts onto a screen, they witnessed his rivalry with Sabretooth and how he had once killed his beloved Silver Fox on his birthday. They recruited Sabretooth, aka Victor Creed, Sergeant David North, aka Maverick, John Wraith, Mastodon and Silver Fox, who was a clone created by CIA or Romulus. Thornton prepared a warehouse in Ontario where they choreographed and recorded elaborate scenarios to implant into Wolverine's mind. Thornton then got hold of a mutant with psychic powers named Aldo and made him implant their recorded memories into Wolverine's mind. However, even with all that effort, they failed to restrain Wolverine, who, after the experiment, went berserk and escaped the Department K facility, slaughtering Dr. Dale Rice and a large number of staff and soldiers who tried to stop him. The disaster stopped the program and temporarily placed it under the coverage of the US Department of Agriculture's Pest Control Section, with Thornton as its director. The heads of Weapon Plus decided to terminate the Weapon X program, but Thornton, after being informed by his assistant, John Sublime, managed to break off the Weapon X program from Weapon Plus and was funded by the US Agricultural Department. They managed to obtain Wolverine's DNA samples and used it to provide healing abilities to their new test subjects. Wolverine 
Wolverine was the first test subject for Weapon X, and the entire concept of this evil organization was introduced along with him. Throughout different forms of media, it has been shown how adamantium was infused in his endoskeleton. This was one of the most significant events for the shaping of Wolverine's future. In the 2009 animated mini-movie Hulk vs. Wolverine, a flashback showcased how Logan was abducted by Professor Thornton and experimented on. The story begins with a drunk Wolverine leaving a bar. Unbeknownst to him, he was being followed by a man in glasses and his two henchmen, who appeared out of nowhere and knocked him down. They dragged him into a van, and the man with glasses informed someone over the phone to prepare the lab, as they would soon be arriving with their test subjects. Logan is then seen to be experimented upon in a fluid-filled glass cylinder. The man with glasses, referred to as the professor, ordered the adamantium bonding process to begin. As it began, blood started gushing out from every hole of Wolverine's body while he screamed in pain. After completing the procedure, he was seen to wake up in a cell where he tried to free himself and six metal claws tore their way out of his wrist. The professor and his team tested him by sending him to encounter a wild polar bear. He was again knocked out and taken in for further research when he finally escaped after massacring every staff member trying to stop him. In the comics, things happened a bit differently. Wolverine, who was serving Team X, quit to join Department K, a secret Canadian Defence Ministry branch in affiliation with Weapon X. There, he partnered with Neil Langram and worked with Nick Fury, then a high-ranking CIA agent, and Richard and Mary Parker. After the assassination of Neil Langram and Sabretooth, Wolverine joined a young US spy, Carl Danvers, to infiltrate the Canadian Ministry of Defence. Several new secrets were revealed, primarily his name being on the list of several names under the title The Mutant Agenda. Upon further digging, they learned about the existence of genetically modified beings called mutants and finally faced Sabretooth in a Canadian Hellfire Club facility. They got into a fight and Sabretooth revealed that Wolverine too was a mutant before exploding the entire facility and keeping all evidence about mutants a secret. Sabretooth's words and his name on the list of mutants drastically affected Wolverine's mind and he soon resorted to extreme drug abuse and alcoholism. After this, at some point in time, Wolverine was pumped with Thorazine and kidnapped by armed men from Weapon X Project, possibly under the orders of Romulus. He was then experimented upon by Professor Dr. Adam Cornelius and Dr. Carol Hines, where his adamantium bonding process was carried out. Despite all the pain and trouble that was inflicted upon Wolverine owing to the Weapon X Project, it transformed him into a nearly indestructible mutant, capable of taking down super powerful characters like the Hulk. Wolverine's unique physiology along with the adamantium bonded endoskeleton made him almost immortal. Weapon H Clayton Cortez was one of the powerful test subjects who was transformed into Weapon H. Created by Greg Pak and Mike Deodato Jr., Weapon H had both Hulk and Wolverine-like powers and made his first appearance in the Totally Awesome Hulk, Comics Issue 21. US Marine and former Eagle Star contractor Clayton and his team were hired to take down the villagers of Uyanka, who were sabotaging a Roxxon pipeline. However, responding to his conscience, Clayton killed his own men to stop the massacre, for which he was captured and handed over to the head of Weapon X's Batch H Division, Dr. Alba, who and his team were working on the creation of the Hulk-Wolverine hybrid. The issue was released in July 2017 and began with a young boy named Bobby Andrews, whom Carla recruited to be part of their Weapon H experiments. William Stryker and his team brainwashed Bobby by showing him visuals of how the Hulk had killed his brother Dave. They fabricated information to convince him that the true way to obtain peace and protect the world is by eradicating mutants. Weapon H Alpha, or Clayton, was being prepared for the experiment. Soon, Hulk and his teammates arrived, after learning about the malevolent motives of the organization. In order to stop them, Stryker released H-Beta, or the newly transformed Bobby. Bobby, by then, had acquired a Hulk-like physique and Wolverine-like claws and attacked Hulk. While the two engaged in a vicious fight, Carla released H-Alpha, who seemed more complete. Strangely, just after he got released, he gave a death stare to Carla and released his claws. 
He then jumped into the scene where H-Beta and the Hulk fought and beheaded H-Beta. It was then revealed that since the subject retained most parts of his brain, H-Alpha deeply hated the Weapon H programmers due to the trauma and pain Stryker and his team inflicted on him. Eventually, after the fight, he escaped and disguised himself as a Spanish worker. Clayton's story is further extended to his solo series Weapon H. In issue 1, set in Butte, Montana, a group of construction workers discuss the bizarre monster Weapon H. One of them informs that according to the news, the monster is headed north, where they all are, while another says that it has a human form too. While all these happen, Clayton is seen to be amongst them. While heading for work, one of them asked Clayton how long he had been working as they had not seen him before, but the question remains unanswered and they all moved to work. Later, after the end of day, a group of goons attack them and try to take their money and their first victim is Clayton. They attack him but easily get knocked down and finally take their gun out and shoot him. Upon shooting, they realize they are soon to be doomed as Clayton transforms into a vicious grey Hulk monster with Wolverine-like claws. Being a combination of the Hulk and Wolverine, he has powers of both. He had superhuman healing abilities and also an adamantium-infused endoskeleton with claws like Wolverine. Weapon X then was working on producing Hulk Wolverine cyborgs for exterminating mutants and they used Clayton as one of their test subjects. However, unlike the rest, Clayton retained most parts of his memory and soon turned against his creators. Sabretooth Created by Chris Claremont and John Bryan, Victor Creed aka Sabretooth was a vicious mutant who was violent and ruthless even before his mutations first manifested. Owing to his rage, he accidentally killed his brother with a piece of pie. His father chained him and even pulled out his long animal teeth so as to purge the child of his demons. Being chained in the family cellar for years, he finally managed to escape by chewing off his own hand and killing his father. Although he had claimed to have killed his mother, it was revealed later that he loved his mother and made sure she had a comfortable life. However, she was killed by the members of the Red Right Hand later. After being freed from his father at the age of 13, Victor unleashed his wrath on society, killing three police officers across three Canadian provinces. At the age of 15, he started working for the railroad, laying down rail from Calgary up to Yukon and even killed a man who frequently picked on him by slicing him up from crotch to throat with his claws. Although Sabretooth is considered to be as strong as Logan, he was not qualified to be a part of the Weapon X program. According to the words of William Stryker from the movie X-Men Origins Wolverine, Victor would have never survived the experiment. You would never survive the operation, William Stryker. However, there were many possibilities as to why Sabretooth could not undergo the complete procedure of transforming. Firstly, adamantium was a rare metal and covering the massive endoskeleton of Sabretooth was less economical than providing it to smaller test subjects of Weapon X. Secondly, the experiments were highly risky and losing a mercenary without any conscious gain would not be smart. The entire motive of the Weapon X program was to create mindless and vicious killing machines, half of which Victor Creed already was, and the remaining part was solved, as Victor would any day serve any malevolent organization for his motives. Being a mutant with animal-like instincts, Sabretooth is like a vicious wild animal. His rage and aggression are similar to Wolverine going berserk. He is an excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant and has been trained by various organizations like the CIA, Weapon X, The Foreigner and Hydra. Owing to his heightened skills, Victor aka Sabretooth is an excellent hunter and an expert marksman. Although he was denied the adamantium upgrade in the movies, there were many instances where his skeleton was fused with adamantium. One was the time when Apocalypse laced his skeleton with adamantium but later took it away from him. Weapon 1 Project Rebirth As mentioned earlier, the Weapon Plus program was initially known as Project Rebirth. Back in 1945, the US government seemed to create super soldiers for World War II. After the professor discovered the secret laboratory of Dr. Nathaniel Essex in a Nazi concentration camp, the government recreated it to experiment on the super soldier serum. The first test subject was none other than young Steve Rogers, who was rejected from the army for being too skinny and weak. The experiment was showcased in Captain America Comics issue number one, published in December 1940. Back in February 1941, the Nazis began Project Nietzsche, 
in hopes of creating their first Obermensch, which meant a superior man in German, but failed. Meanwhile, the American and British governments collaborated to start their program of creating a super soldier serum. Dr. Erskine, the working scientist, created both the super soldier serum and the Vita Ray chamber. After two failed experiments, they succeeded with Steve Rogers and created the first super soldier, Captain America, in 1950. This was later designated as Weapon 1. With the Super Soldier Serum, Steve Rogers transformed into a superhuman with enhanced physiology and strength. His body was enhanced to the peak of human efficiency, giving him superhuman speed, agility, stamina and durability. He also became a skilled martial artist and tactician and was then given the Vibranium Shield and we know how he used it to take down his opponents. Weapon 2 – Project Brute Force Project Brute Force was created in alliance with Multicorp, owned by Adam Frost. Dr. Randall Pierce led it as part of Weapon 2. Adam Frost planned to create cybernetically enhanced animals that would later serve him as his private attack force. Initially, they experimented on animals and created a prototype team named Harvey Metals. Each team member was provided with a weaponized exoskeleton and near-human level intelligence. The fast food clowns later abducted the team, after which Multicorp created Team Brute Force to retrieve them. One such experiment on animals produced Weapon 2, a cybernetically enhanced squirrel. He was captured by Shannon Sugarbaker, who used him to fight in tournaments of anthropomorphic animals. He even had the name Wolvertini due to his Wolverine-like abilities. Created by Chip Zdarsky and Joe Quinones, Weapon 2 first appeared in Howard the Duck, Volume 6, Issue 1. Although Wolvertini looked cute, he could not be taken casually. He possessed all Wolverine-like abilities, including his adamantium claws and quick healing. In addition, his intelligence was drastically enhanced to bring it at par with a human. Weapon 3 – Harry Pizer, a.k.a. The Skinless Man Harry Pizer was a citizen and a barrister of the United Kingdom. He was a mutant with shape-shifting abilities. Owing to his unique multi-sensory and elastic skin, he could easily extract information and evidence in disguise. His record and performance soon grabbed the attention of Truett Hudson, aka Professor Thornton, aka The Professor, who offered him an opportunity to serve his country during the Cold War. He soon made Harry Pizer the new test subject for the Weapon Plus program and gave him an upgrade by enhancing his skin's durability and elasticity. This augmented version of Harry Pizer was designated as Weapon 3. He began his service by gathering intel from Soviet soldiers and killing them. He was then tasked to recover the orb of necromancy from the other world. However, someone within the Weapon Plus project sent Phantom X to kill Pizer and stop him from getting the orb. Phantom X reached the other world and shot Pizer, leaving him to die. Fortunately, he was retrieved by the Captain Britain Corps, who then removed his skin as a punishment for the large number of men he had killed to get the orb. Phantom X later stole his skin and created special bullets out of it. After Phantom X was turned over to the Britain Corps, Pizer learned about his special skin being stolen by Phantom X. In hopes of revenge, Pizer trained his muscles to perform like his skin and waited for his moment. And finally, when Psylocke helped Phantom X, he ambushed them and peeled the skin off Phantom X's face. Pizer, aka the Skinless Man, was then recruited into the new Brotherhood of Evil in their mission to take down Team X-Force. Later, Pizer was killed by Deadpool. Created by Rick Remender and Jack Tocchini, Pizer the Skinless Man made his first full appearance in Uncanny X-Force issue 21. Pizer's primary source of power was his skin, which was elastic, durable and possessed multiple senses. After being modified by the Weapon Plus program, his skin's strength and durability got tremendously enhanced. He later channeled his mutant abilities to teach his muscles how to expand and contract at a molecular level. Weapon 4 – Man Thing Dr. Theodore Ted Salis, who later became the Man-Thing, was a professor of biochemistry at Empire State University. The United States Army later recruited him in their Project Sulphur, which aimed at providing their soldiers immunity from biochemical warfare. Salis developed the SO2 serum, which could make subjects immune to all toxic biochemicals. Unfortunately, the chemical was proven unstable, as it transformed the tested subjects into monsters. Meanwhile, Salis fell in love with one of his students named Ellen Brandt, and the two eloped following a secret affair. Salis needed to shift his research to some secluded area, so they moved to Everglades. 
He was then assigned to a SHIELD research program codenamed Project Gladiator in Everglades, Florida. While Salas engrossed himself in his research and neglected Ellen since their honeymoon, the subversive organization Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, manipulated a bitter Ellen and conspired to steal Salas' modified serum. After completing his work, Salas memorized the entire formula and deleted all existing documents. Aline led Ted into an AIM ambush, which he escaped and injected himself with the last dose of his formula. He attempted to reach Dr. Kurt Connors, whom he had met during his work in Empire State University, but his car crashed into the swamp. The accident was lethal and he should have died, but the formula and magical energies of the swamp transformed him into a hideous creature. Salis, after being transformed, slew the AIM agents and burnt half of Ellen's face, who, unbeknownst to him, was pregnant. As showcased in Weapon Plus Comics World War V, the Man-Thing reflects upon his losses since the day he transformed while working for the US Army. Man-Thing possessed a wide range of powers and abilities. To begin with, his malleability, which according to science means the property to be reshaped into thin sheets. Man-Thing could pass through fences by oozing through small vents. He was capable of self-propelled flight and teleportation. Along with superhuman strength and durability, he possessed the power of reality displacement and dimensional travel. His only weakness was his dependency on the swamp environment. The Weapon 5 Project Venom The Dark Organization then went to experiment with a Venom symbiote in an attempt to make Sim Soldiers. This assignment was codenamed Project Venom and Weapon 5 as a fifth installment of the Weapon Plus program. Back in 1965, S.H.I.E.L.D. had discovered an alien dragon made of living darkness in a glacier. They codenamed it Grendel and learned that it could bond with host organisms to create predatory monsters. Under pressure of the government, S.H.I.E.L.D., led by Nick Fury, initiated a symbiote super soldier program in 1966 and field tested it during the Vietnam War with disastrous results. Following this, S.H.I.E.L.D. shut down on their experiments, but Weapon Plus managed to take it over and named it Weapon 5, or Project Venom. For a few decades, Weapon Plus monitored other government-aided Sim Soldier programs such as Project Rebirth 2.0 and the Mercury Team and tried implementing their research and technology. They inferred that the previous Sim Soldier prototypes were corrupted by the symbiote hive mind and planned on creating suits of bio-armor, virally altered to be free from all contamination. Meanwhile, the vicious dragon codenamed Grendel awakened and attacked Manhattan, following which Carnage attacked Weapon 5 headquarters. Carnage had bonded with a sample of the Grendel symbiote, which made him extremely powerful. He slaughtered most of the staff with only the Mars team, led by Robert Urquhart, escaping and surviving. To seek revenge, he forcefully initiated Weapon H, but the head of Weapon 5's research and development went insane and sabotaged their fight against Carnage, resulting in the death of everyone. In the aftermath, Weapon 5 remained shut until the threat of carnage passed away and later restarted with Dr. Randall Pierce as its new head. The Weapon 5 subjects were bonded with samples of Grendel, creating sim suits with which they could manifest claws, fangs, spikes, tendrils and even blades. Weapon 6 – Luke Cage Created by Archie Goodwin, John Romita Sr. and George Tusker, Luke Cage is one of the most recognizable superheroes in the Marvel Universe. He was born to Esther and James Lucas in the district of Harlem, New York, and named Carl Lucas. As a teenager, he spent his life causing trouble on the streets with his friends Willis Stryker and Reva Connors. He even joined a gang named The Rivals with Stryker and fought the Diablos. Eventually, he committed petty crimes like stealing for the deformed crime lord Sonny Caputo, aka Hammer. Meanwhile, Reva had a relationship with Stryker. When she ended the relationship for Lucas, Stryker framed Lucas by planting heroin stolen from Cottonmouth's organization at his place and informed the cops. Lucas was then arrested and taken to Seagate Prison. Meanwhile, the Weapon X program under Vietnam War veteran Noah Burstein achieved notable success with their experiment on Mitchell Tanner, aka War and planned to continue their experiments on the inmates of Seagate Prison. They experimented
tested on Lucas and gave him a considerable amount of enhanced strength and durability. Still being a wanted man, Lucas took the new name Luke Cage and started his career as Hero for Hire, where he helped anyone who paid the price for it. Being enhanced, his body's cellular regeneration rate increased rapidly, giving him enormous strength. He could lift up to 25 tons and lunge through 4-inch steel plates. His body became as strong as titanium, making him nigh invulnerable. He was an expert combatant and also possessed an accelerated healing factor. Weapon Upgrade Adam Appearing in Wolverine and Captain America, Weapon Plus Issue 1, Adam was a Captain America fanatic. During the period of time when Captain America was frozen in ice, the world knew that he was dead, but Adam believed him to be alive. He wore an imitation costume of Captain America and roamed across the streets where he often got bullied. Later, Adam was taken in by Dr. Younger as a subject for the Weapon Plus program. Dr. Younger made him a super soldier and brainwashed him into believing that he was the real Captain Captain America. He planted a mind control device in him through which he gave instructions. Adam considered it as the voice of God. Towards the end of the issue, he confronted Captain America and Wolverine and gave them a tough fight. He even possessed Wolverine's regenerative healing factor. However, to maintain the secrecy of the location, Dr. Junger instructed Adam to explode the lab in which he died as well. Weapon 7 Frank Simpson Frank Simpson was the mentally disturbed son of a rich, abusive, alcoholic, upper-class woman in Ohio. Owing to a lack of maternal love, he developed an unhealthy attraction for his babysitter who had feelings for his father, Charles. The young babysitter manipulated young Frank into killing his mother to get a pass for his father. Frank eventually got kidnapped by Wolverine, who was then working for Weapon X. Wolverine showed up and shot the babysitter, following which Charles committed suicide. Frank was abducted by Logan for the new Weapon X program, Project Homegrown. Years later, he was working as a Black Ops agent in the Vietnam War, where he got captured by the Viet Cong and tortured severely. Logan implanted the phrase, no VC, as a trigger word that would make Frank crazy and make him attack viciously as a response to the tortures he suffered. To test him, Logan released him upon a village of peasants. The peasants tried soothing Frank's anger by uttering no VC, meaning they are not Viet Cong, but this goes bizarre as Frank kills everyone ruthlessly and burns down the entire village. Later, in the final phase of the Weapon 7 program, Frank was installed with a second heart and a subdermal mesh to deflect weapons. He became a partial cyborg and even got addicted to adrenaline pill, which helped him control his rage. The outcomes of Project Homegrown had a devastating effect on Frank's mind, but it did give him some badass powers. His bones were replaced with advanced cybernetic components, which gave him enormous strength and durability. He also possessed a healing factor, owing to his accelerated metabolism. He did have schizophrenia but he became a savage fighter, good with all sorts of firearms and an excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Weapon 8 The products of Weapon 8 are yet to be introduced in the comics, but it is perhaps the most mysterious of the Weapon Plus program. It seemed like Weapon 8 served as a host of enhanced assassins and sleeper agents to assist Super Sentinels like Phantom X and Ultimatum. They were controlled with extreme usage of drugs and hypnosis. It was teased in Grant Morrison and Chris Machalo's new X-Men comics issue 145. Weapon 9 Typhoid Mary Created by Anne Locenti and John Romita Jr., Mary Walker was a meek, sweet girl with three other alter egos, Typhoid Mary being one of them. Her parents disagreed upon giving her birth, and it seemed later that her father didn't want her. He frequently molested her until a different persona took over her one day and she fought back. Since then, her father has never touched her again. This new alter ego was in response to the pain her father inflicted upon her, and it gave her mutant-like abilities. She possessed the power of mind control, telepathy, and pyrokinesis. She was taken to an asylum where her second persona acquired the name Typhoid, and she always had a high fever. Eventually, Typhoid escaped from prison and Mary, the primary persona, became a well-known actress. However, later she went missing and ended up in a brothel where Matt Murdock, before becoming Daredevil, arrived chasing a villain. The women in the brothel defended the criminal, and so after a hustle, Matt pushed Mary out of the window, falling from which she she promised herself never to get hurt by a man and became Typhoid. Typhoid later had a romantic relationship with Matt Murdock. She worked for Kingpin and fought Daredevil on several occasions. She then developed a third persona, Bloody Mary, who was violent, ruthless and hated all men. At one time, Bloody Mary had started killing every man who hurt their female partners. Out of guilt and despair, she joined a program that promised to fix her under the influence of a psychiatrist named Michael Hunt. The initiative was dubbed Project Psyche and was 
led by Hunt himself. This was one of the Weapon Plus programs in disguise, which finally transformed her into Mutant Zero, who had access to all three Persona's powers – telepathy, telekinesis, pyrokinesis, and mind control. She fought against several powerful characters like Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider. <laughs> Weapon 11 Although the 2009 Marvel movie X-Men Origins Wolverine showed us that Weapon 11 was an amalgamation of the powers of Wolverine and John Wraith and several other mutants in Wade Wilson's body, the comics had a different take. Appearing in Weapon X Volume 2 Issue 23, the project was hidden for quite some time after Weapon X. They were working on several other projects which, in the issue, were stated as Weapon 12 and Weapon 11. Nothing much is shown in the comics, but later Weapon 11 was slated to become another stage of the project, as created by Romulus. He was experimenting on Wolverine's son, Dakin, whom he tried fusing his bones with Muramasa so as to be able to exterminate Wolverine. Weapon 12 – Huntsman Huntsman was the first of the latest generation of living weapons created by the Weapon Plus program. He was born and artificially evolved in the man-made environment designed to create super soldiers using sentinel technology known as the World. He was later killed by Phantom X or Weapon 13 by activating his kill switch. While alive, Huntsman had a viral hive mind consciousness which converted anyone who he touched on adapting to his mindset and thought process. He derived his powers from nano-sentinel technology. His only weakness was the failsafe switch, which ultimately led to his demise. Weapon 13 – Phantom X The Weapon Plus project developed Phantom X or Lee Phantom X as Weapon 13. He was a product of a human mother and a machine. He was created to serve both as an agent and a potential prototype for the next generation of Super Sentinels. He was very cunning and highly skilled in misdirecting his opponents. Phantom X had a ship named Eva, which was an extension of his nervous system. He originally had three brains and later became the embodiment of one of them. He adopted the name Jean-Philippe Charles and developed a French accent. Owing to his quasi-mutant status and rebellious nature, he joined the mutant cause and served as a teammate for the X-Men, Magneto's team, Cable X's X-Force and the X-Force Strike Team. When he was murdered, Eva deposited his body for cloning and accidentally made three different bodies for the three of his brains, one of which was a female version named Cluster. The third was a dark and ruthless one named Dark Phantom X. Created by Grant Morrison and Igor Cordy, Phantom X first appeared in the new X-Men comics issue 128, published in August 2002. Phantom X was a mutant with an autonomous Picotech entity manifesting his primary nervous system. Although it required extreme concentration, Eva could fly herself and regenerate bioelectric charges as weapons. Phantom X was an excellent marksman and skilled in misdirecting his enemies. He could heal himself by going into a trance. He also possessed superhuman intelligence. Weapon 14 – Stepford Cuckoos After her fight with Trevor Fitzroy, Emma First had fallen into a coma, during which Dr. John Sublime harvested over 1,000 eggs from her to begin experimenting for Weapon 14 under the Weapon Plus program. Her eggs were then used to create a 1,000 identical mutant girls in the hopes of killing every mutant on the planet using their combined telepathic powers. To master telepathy, he sent five of the mutant twins to Xavier's Institute. These five were named Sophie, Phoebe, Mindy, Celeste and Esme and in the Institute they acquired the name Stepford Cuckoos. Stepford Cuckoos had an enormous list of powers like a telepathic hive mind, telepathic illusion that could create realistic psychic illusions and mind alteration. They could create astral projections and could affect certain areas of the brain to induce sleep paralysis and amnesia. They had psionic abilities, the power of telekinesis, superhuman strength, stamina, durability and a spectacular organic diamond form. Weapon 15 – Ultimaton Ultimaton was yet another attempt of the corrupt organization to create a perfect super soldier. He was designated as Weapon 15, as he was born and artificially evolved in the world. In this man-made environment, time worked differently, for which Ultimaton was several generations more advanced than its predecessors. Ultimaton possessed a wide range of powers, including electromagnetic radiation, flight, superhuman strength and stamina. When Ultimaton was released into the real world, 
all because of the agents of advanced idea mechanics who wanted to retrieve the technology stolen from them, he showed the true extent of his powers. He killed every agent and even fought Wolverine. Ultimaton died when Wolverine destroyed the space station containing him. Before he died, he claimed that he could have been a painter. Weapon 16, All God. Created by Jason Aaron and Isaac Ribic, Weapon 16 was a type of bioweapon that appeared in Dark Rain, The List Wolverine, Volume 1, Issue 1. It was a product of the Weapon Plus Super Sentinel initiative. Unlike the previous subjects, Weapon 16 was not a superhuman, but an air-released viral gas created with the use of time manipulation and nanotechnology. Being a viral gas, Weapon 16 attacked the faith reserves of its opponents and transformed them into mind-controlled faith full followers of all god x23 from the creators craig kyle and chris yost Laura, aka X-23, was a replica, a clone of Wolverine, who made her debut in NYX Issue 3, published in February 2004. She also made a live-action debut in the 2017 movie Logan. Dr. Martin Sutter, in an attempt to create a clone of Wolverine, recruited the famous mutant geneticist Dr. Sarah Kinney. However, due to the damage of all Weapon X samples, Dr. Sarah was unable to decode the Y chromosome and so proposed to make a female version of Wolverine. After an initial denial, and 22 failed attempts, she finally succeeded in creating the embryo using X chromosomes. As retribution for creating a female clone, Sutter made Kinney conceive the baby in her womb. After nine months of surrogacy, she finally gave birth to X-23. They kept the baby in observation, and after seven years, they started exposing X-23 to radiation poisoning in order to manifest the mutant abilities in the newborn baby. They extracted her claws, fused them with adamantium, and placed them back. The brutal operation happened without any local or general anesthesia, and Dr. Xander Rice, the former protege of Sutter, created a trigger scent at which X-23 went crazy. Later, when a serial killer kidnapped Dr. Sarah's niece, she released X-23 with the task of retrieving her, which she did by killing the kidnappers. This resulted in Rice's termination of Dr. Sarah's duty to the Weapon X program and she was escorted off the base. Rice also conspired to kill Sutter and his family using X-23, which was a secret until X-23 informed Sarah later. Rice was also conducting the creation of two more clones, X-24 and X-50, which were in the incubation pods. Sarah, upon knowing the malice of Rice, wrote a letter to X-23 asking her to destroy the two pods, which she did, and finally reunited with her mother, Sarah. The two planned on escaping, but Rice activated the trigger scent, which made X-23 go into a murderous frenzy and kill her mother. During the last months, Sarah told X-23 that she loved her and that her name was Laura. She also gave the letter and pictures of Charles Xavier, Wolverine, and the Xavier Institute before taking her last and final breath. X-23, being a clone of Wolverine, had identical powers like regenerative healing, super strength and animal instincts. Instead of three, she had two retractable adamantium coated claws. Kimura. Born to an abusive father and a negligent mother, Kimura was first introduced in New X-Men issue number 31. She was bullied in school as well. At some point, Kimura's grandmother became a guardian. However, it was too late as Kimura's emotional scars were permanent and no matter what she did, it did not help. Sometime later, the grandmother suffered a serious heart attack after which Kimura was left on her own. She eventually came in contact with the facility, an offshoot of the Weapon Plus project, where she underwent some procedures The grant her physical invulnerability, density control, and reconstruction. Her nature grew ruthless and she started taking revenge on the ones who had wronged her. Due to her nature and invulnerability to adamantium claws, she became the handler of X-23, with whom she was very harsh. Over the years, Kimura had adapted to the very nature of her abusive father and often tortured X-23 for fun. Kimura was specifically created to rival X-23. She could phase herself through spaces between molecules of objects except for adamantium. With the ability to control her density, she could increase or decrease her mass at will, keeping her volume constant. She also possessed psychic defenses. Shiva. The next on our list was not exactly a test subject, but a robot created by Weapon X. With test subjects often going against them, Weapon X needed a powerful force to assert their control over them, and Shiva was one such robot. He was nearly indestructible and was created to be the enforcer of the Weapon X program. His primary job was to track down and terminate any operative who went rogue. Shiva was also resistant to Wolverine's adamantium claws. 
Native. When Wolverine was captured and experimented upon by the Weapon X program, Native 2 was with him. Both had been subjected to the atrocities of the vicious organization, and both escaped at the same time. In a turn of events, both Native and Wolverine spent time together in a cabin on the hills of British Columbia and fell in love. Although unsure what happened to their relationship, Native was operating alone in Vancouver when she was spotted by an offshoot of the Weapon X program. Creed and an ops team tried capturing her, but it went horribly wrong as Native incapacitated Creed and killed two agents ruthlessly. Native's powers were similar to that of Wolverine's. She had regenerative self-healing, superhuman senses, and super strength. Maverick. Next on our list is Christopher Nord, aka Maverick. Created by John Bryan and Jim Lee, he was born in former East Germany and was an idealist who fought against the communist regime as a part of the freedom fighters for West Germany. His brother Andreas fought for the East Germans and Nord was forced to kill him in cold blood during the struggle. After an encounter with the assassin confessor, he was severely injured and was recovering in a German hospital where he fell in love with a nurse named Ginetta Barcellini. They had a pleasant love life and eventually got married. In time, he discovered that Janetta was a double agent and was forced to kill her in a fight. His beloved's death seriously affected him and he was heavily engrossed in guilt and pain, after which he became a full-time mercenary. He joined the Central Intelligence Agency's Weapon X program as a member of its covert operation unit, Team X. He changed his name to David North and took the code name Maverick. Following a series of events, he was captured by Russian crime lord Ivan Pushkin, whose scientists implied planted false memories into Nord's mind and made him believe that Barrington was responsible for his wife's betrayal. All this was done so that Maverick would kill Barrington and prevent him from testifying against Pushkin's financial interests. Maverick did manage to overcome Pushkin's manipulation, but by then, Pushkin's agents Hammer and Sickle had killed Barrington. Hammer and Sickle later got hold of Maverick and gouged out his left eye, leaving him to die in the Swiss Alps. However, he survived and later resurfaced to help Wolverine against the revived Weapon X program. Weapon X sent Sabretooth to recruit Maverick and John Wraith, but both of them denied it. Sabretooth killed John Wraith and critically injured Maverick. With only a few minutes to live, Maverick agreed to the Weapon X initiative, which modified him to become Agent Zero. He later served them in gathering mutants for their experiments, but hated it and developed recurring suicidal tendencies. Even without the aid of any modification and powers, Maverick was an excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant and an expert in covert operations. He had a vast knowledge of computers and communications technology and was a precise marksman. He carried a wide range of weapons, including pistols, rifles, wrist-mounted nail shooters, adamantium-coated knives and snipers. He wore a suit of body armor with airtight seals shielding and a mask supplying oxygen. Marrow, created by Jeff Loeb, David Brewer, Scott Lobel, and Joe Madureira, Sarah aka Marrow was one of the underground dwelling Morlocks. At some point, she joined the X-Men for a brief period of time and was mentored by Wolverine. However, one drawback was that Sarah always had an uncontrollable growth that disfigured her and made her an outcast. She became a part of the experiments conducted by Weapon X as they promised her a cure. Although it helped her look perfect and wholesome, she later felt betrayed, owing to the anti-mutant take. She then became a part of the XL, X-Force and the Hellfire Club. She made her first appearance in Cable issue number 15, a published 1994. Sarah had a long list of powers, the primary ones being her hyper-accelerated metabolism and bone growth. Her bone structure was immensely durable and could withstand heavy blows without any serious damage. Her powers also gave her healing abilities and enhanced strength, reflexes and agility. She also possessed two hearts, which helped her survive after storms tore out her heart. Ajax the man who later became Ajax was originally named Francis. He was a former enforcer at Dr. Killebrew's laboratory workshop, which served to take care of failed subjects from the Weapon X program. His primary job was to prepare the subjects for Killebrew's evil experiments whenever they stepped out of line. One such subject was Wade Wilson. Killebrew had previously experimented on Francis by removing his nerves to make him insensitive to pain, along with adding subcutaneous implants for super speed and agility. Created by Joe Kelly and Walter 
Professor McDaniel, Francis, aka Ajax, made his first appearance in Deadpool, Volume 3, Issue 14. Francis also served as the primary antagonist of the 2016 movie Deadpool. Similar to the movie, in the comics he was killed by Deadpool, but was retrieved from Hell and later sent to track Deadpool and Thanos, as shown in Deadpool vs. Thanos, Issue Number 3. Ajax's primary powers were super strength and enhanced reflexes. Owing to the alteration of his nervous system, he was immune to pain. After Killebrew added his enhancements, Ajax was even stronger and faster than any Class 10 mutant. He also possessed pyrokinesis and flight. <laughs> Conclusion the Weapon X program gave many interesting characters, some of which turned evil or monstrous while some served as heroes. The entire organization and its offshoots have been consistent in maintaining their secrecy. The experiments they conducted were brutal and in some cases the course of events that followed was unfortunate. Most of the subjects escaped or perished, while some had to be killed. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.